what is up everyone welcome back to the channel so today's we're gonna be working on the forerunner now what I'm gonna be doing with this car is actually replacing most of the speakers on the vehicle and the reason I say most of them because I'm not replacing every single one of them this car particularly here has a horrible sound system at this point the reason for that is because most of the speakers are blown I think I'm only getting sound out of the driver door speaker and sometimes the passenger door kind of varies whenever songs change or whatever happens but sometimes i get sounds i get nothing from the back doors i got nothing from the twitters up in the dash or the ones in the back and last winter i completely had to remove the subwoofer that's in the trunk because it completely blew out literally there was nothing left of it all the it was completely like somebody took a knife and cut it all around it so i kind of removed that i left the backing in there but pretty much removed the subwoofer itself and what we're we doing today is I'm gonna be replacing seven out of the 10 speakers. The only two speakers that I'm not replacing are going to be the center console or the center dash speaker and the two rear speakers in the back pillars in the trunk or in the cargo area. But I'm replacing every other speaker, the two main six by nine speakers on the doors, the six, uh, six and a half speakers on the back doors, the two tweeters on top, uh, those are all being replaced. But that being said, the sound system on this car is, was not a bad sound system for its year. It came with a JBL synthesis sound system. It's got an amplifier, again, a total of 10 speakers, including the subwoofer, so it wasn't bad. But again, you know, 18 years of it being in there, speakers started to go bad and stuff like that. So I'm basically just gonna be replacing them. I'm not doing an upgrade because I'm kind of keeping it in a, in a specific budget. I'm trying to keep it under $200. At the end of the video, I will show you guys exactly how much each speaker cost me and how much I spent total. Now, again, if you decide to want to do this kind of thing and you want to upgrade the sound system, you can. You could go into a nicer subwoofer, the one I'm going to be using, a uh, lot better speakers. You could actually do component speakers on each door and tweeters just like the actual car came with. Replace the dash speaker, replace the two back speakers, all of that. So again, we're keeping everything under the budget, specifically for the 2003 and it's only my daily driver. I don't, it's, it's, it's not my main car. So I kind of keep it, trying to keep everything that I do to this in a budget. So the speakers I'm using are by no means am I advertising anything. These are just speakers that I found that are still a good company and also a quality speaker, but still keeping myself under the budget. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm gonna be using and then we'll get started on the car and then I'll see you guys once I'm done with the whole install. So here's everything I got for this install. I got the connectors that connect specifically to the wiring harness for our 2003 4Runner. This makes life a lot easier basically instead of having to cut and splice wiring you just basically plug and play all this then you got the speaker adapters this is for the six by nine for the front doors and of course the ones for the rear doors for the six and a half some cars may not require this again these are specific to each vehicle the forerunner requires this for better installation next we went ahead and basically got here pretty much the sony speakers that i ended up getting very nice Sony speakers. You don't need these front covers, of course, unless you're gonna be showing them off, which I'm not. They're gonna be behind the door panels. Nice magnets on them. And they seem premium and they sound good as well. And these are the ones for the back doors. Six and a half, again, don't need those front covers, but supposedly good, good sound quality, very good ratings on Amazon. Then I try to match all the speakers throughout the car. The only ones I couldn't match were the two and three quarter inch tweeters that go on the top of the door. So I ended up getting these kickers here. Now these, again, two and three quarters, they do a great job. And even for this full runner, if you want to replace all the tweeters, these are the same one you will get all the way around. And they were pretty cheap. And they do come with all the hardware to install and everything needed for installation inside the boxes. You see all the components and wiring and everything else next of course we got the Bose Elite now this is the subwoofer that I replaced the factory sub with this is an 8 inch 4 ohm subwoofer and again the spacing for this particular car when you're putting this subwoofer in you have to have a shallow subwoofer and without having to spend a lot of money into a pioneer subwoofer or anything like that this was actually a pretty good buy and boss Boss has been around for a while. I think I said Bose earlier, but Boss has been around for a while and they make pretty good products. Not, I'm not gonna say it's the highest quality, you know, like Pioneer or Kicker or JL Audio out there, but these make really good products. Here's a pretty much look at the front of it. It looks really nice. Again, it's gonna be behind a grill, so you won't even see it. 
To start off the install, we're gonna remove the armrest, the light, and the trim inside the door handle. So first, start off by removing the light. Go ahead and pop that out. Connectors right there, push down on it. One finger, you could actually take the whole thing out. Next, we'll remove the armrest, pry up on it and pull straight up, very easy to remove. And then of course, we're gonna remove the trim inside the door handle. Now, by removing the armrest and this trim, you'll have two Phillips screws to remove out of there. Go ahead and get those out of the way. Once you do that, you're going to want to pull on the door forward. Now, one thing I did forget when I did this, there is a small plastic tab that is on the side of the door right up here. Make sure you remove that. You just It's a push tab. Just push it in and pull it straight out, and that takes that out. And then, of course, you can remove the door. It's just held in by a bunch of plastic clips and then hung on the top piece up there. So go ahead and just pull that out. Once that is out, there is a Phillips screw you want to remove to get the door handle out of the way. Go ahead and take that out and pull the door handle, put the screw right back in its hole so you won't lose it. Then undo all the connectors on for the main control panels for the windows and door locks. Now I had a problem with this one here. This is for the main window. So I ended up just taking the three screws and just pretty much removing the whole thing out of the way. Once the door panel is removed, you got access to all the speakers inside the door. Go ahead and pop the connector right out. 10 millimeter screws will get the door panel out for the actual lower one you can use a phillips or a 10 millimeter either way it'll get this one out of there and then go ahead and just pry it out if it's stuck in there to remove the top speaker or the top tweeter we're going to use a 10 millimeter bolt first you want to go ahead and unplug the connector now it does become a little pain just kind of wiggle it around it will actually come off eventually and then go ahead and push the tab down and unplug it and take your 10 millimeter and take everything completely out. Now, I always like to put the bolts back from where I got them. So again, so I don't lose them or misplace them. All right, we have all both the tweeter and the six by nine out with the casing. Of course, now what we gotta do is prep everything to put it back in. Now, the six by nine is not the pain, the pain here. And actually you guys can see here the difference between the plastic retainers is sitting on, on the speaker at this point but it is a thickness of difference if you go from plastic retainer to plastic retainer there and of course the speaker itself look at this is a paper speaker it's been in there since who knows again 2003 it's original factory and we're replacing it with this the reason we're replacing it with this and we're using this thinner one is because you don't want this if you put this speaker in here you may end up hitting that window that's of course inside of the door right now because we lowered it prior to removing this so we wouldn't damage it but there's of course you don't want to hit the glass you don't want the glass making any contact with that you want enough space between so basically this is going to go here and of course we got our wiring harness good thing about these is they have the little hole to run the wiring harness inside of it so it's not sticking out the side or anything crazy like that so this is not going to be the issue, this is actually pretty simple, straightforward. The pain that I always have is gonna be this one here, the tweeter. Now, these here are component speakers. Basically, the way the car works is it sends all the low frequency signals, so the bass and stuff like that, to the component speaker here, which is what we're replacing this speaker with. Problem here is that this speaker already has a tweeter built into it. So, it's gonna send the high and low here, I and mean, you may get some distortion off of this, but it's gonna get better swung quality too. Anyways, now, Here's where you would basically be putting a crossover and separating where the crossover will basically send the actual free, only high frequency or low frequencies to this one and high frequencies to your new, new tweeter. But we're not doing that. We're doing this on a budget now. If we do get any type of major distortion on this, I will probably have to install that. I don't want to spend any more money on the car than I have to, but this is what we're going to do at this point. We're going to leave this the way it is. We're going to install it the way it is. And now this one here, it comes with this resistor or if you want to call it a bass block or what it is so basically what it'll do is it'll send any hot low notes or low frequencies that go to this it'll stop it from going to this and protect it and only get the high frequencies so the voices and stuff like that will come through this one now to install this and this is where it becomes a little more complicated we're gonna to have to cut the wiring off of this speaker 
and it basically goes connected from red to red. So if we look at the speaker, that tells you which one's the positive, which has got actually a little dot right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. A little red dot, that is the positive. It also has a little plus sign in there. I don't know if the camera catches that, but there is a plus sign in there for that. And that goes between here. So when we cut this wire here, this hooks up from this wire to this, to the positive here. And then of course we're gonna have to solder that. Now, I suck at soldering. I'm gonna be honest with you, I suck at it. Not the best at soldering. So I will show you guys me cutting this and basically hooking these up. And then before I solder, I'm gonna cut because I'm not gonna embarrass myself on national, on national TV, not national TV, but on YouTube. Um, probably make, making a mess of the solder and it, it's, it's gotta be a mess. I can tell you that much right now. Either way, that's how the connection goes. Now, of course, if you guys notice the way this speaker comes out, it has this bracket right here. And that's why Kicker actually sends you a bunch of brackets. You just gotta match them up. Ones are thinner than the other ones thicker than the other ones. The one that matches perfectly to this bracket here is the thicker one that matches absolutely perfect. And of course, I already tried it inside of the speaker here. I'm trying to do this one-handed, guys. Give me a second here. And that's pretty much... looks right there so it's if you're doing the same one on a forerunner it is the thicker one there's again two they send you two different ones one thinner one thicker you'll be able to tell the difference and of course when you match it up it'll match up perfectly and that way this matches up to the holes right in there as well so but let's go ahead and get the six by nine which is the easiest thing to do out of this whole thing set up and go back in the car and then we'll get back to the tweeter on this one all right so we're going to prep the new speaker now the reason i'm doing this is because i need these screws now the speaker that i got from amazon came, they didn't come in the in the box originally from sony it came in a box like it was i think it was an open box and the screws were missing so i'm going to need these screws usually if you get brand new ones it'll come with the mounting screws on there and you won't need to do this step here you can just go ahead and just start mounting them back on the car so for the purposes of the video, I went ahead and did this step here on the bench. Normally, you could just take the speaker adapter, bolt it down to the car, and then put the grill or the speaker right over into the adapter and drill it all in. And of course, connect everything in the car. But again, for the purpose of the video, show everybody I did it here on the workbench. All right, so go ahead and just basically use the same factory screws that you took off from factory speaker to mount it back on the door. Everything lines up perfectly on here, so there's no need to adjust anything. Once you get all four screws in and tightened down, next thing you gotta do is just go ahead and plug it in. And again, because of the harnesses we have, it's the plug and play, so you don't have to cut anything or anything else. This saves you a lot of time. All right, so for the tweeter, it's a little bit more complicated. This, you have to solder in in line with the positive, the capacitor that comes with it. This is like a base blocker to keep any low frequencies coming through this tweeter. So you're gonna go ahead and solder all this in. Now, I didn't have any heat shrink to properly do this, but the only thing you're gonna use is the factory connector. You're gonna cut it. You're gonna cut out the old capacitor that's on there and install the new one, because of course, the new one has more resistance for the actual kickers for or for the new speakers once you do that use a head and use a face plates to install the tweeter right back onto the mounting plate of the factory speaker same factory bolts tighten it down and just plug it in and you're all set to go all right so we have, all right, so we now have the tweeter hooked up, the speaker at the bottom hooked up, the six by nine is all hooked up, connected. That tweeter, by the way, I was wrong when I was showing you guys this. 
the two it comes in two pieces of course that fit here the one skinnier piece goes over the speaker just like it did as i showed you when i was installing it um when you open the speaker it doesn't come with an instruction manual on it but uh there is a barcode or a yeah there's a little code scanner in the back you use the phone on there it shows you exactly how it goes back on so pretty much because i was about to put this on like wait a minute how is it going to hold the speaker in place and then i noticed like oh wait so the smaller one fits inside of the bigger one and that's how it hooks on back to the car so we're gonna go ahead and turn this on and see how it sounds all right so i got the car running got the music over here of course i can't play any copyrighted music so i'm playing off of my phone my youtube music i usually put on my videos let's see how this sounds bro, look at me, can you see? Bro, do you do me bro making noise use a beat bro whoa, i press the button in the dark all night bro that money clip is not in the night looks like bro upgrade the diamonds now the girlfriends are like whoa, 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 whoa. all right so so far it sounds good they're both working um didn't hear any static, didn't hear anything bad on the, on the, so, so that actually sounds pretty good. Again, it doesn't sound the best because I still have the burned out center console one. I have the, I think the back, the tweeter on the driver passenger door is still burned out, so I gotta replace that one. But now, I'm gonna show you guys how to replace the one on the rear driver door, which is easy, it's just like a six by nine from the front one, but I'll show you the guys anyways, and then once I'm done with that one, I will do off camera the other two doors, of course, and then we'll come back and we'll finish off with the subwoofer. So for the back door, it's pretty much the same thing. Remove the armrest, remove the trim panel on the door handle, remove the two screws. Don't forget to do the light, which I did forget to take the light out on this one. And I was struggling here because the harness connector is not very long, doesn't give you much slack. So I had a hard time getting the light out of here while I was trying to hold the panel up. Once you get, of course, the panel out of the way, you gotta remove the door handle, just like you did before on the front door. And of course, get the panel out of the way disconnect the speaker and with this speaker you only have three phillips screws so one two and three and then the speaker comes right out and same process as the front speaker go ahead and use the factory screws or you can use the new screws given to you to mount the plate on this again you can do this at the car it does not need to be taken to a workbench i did this for the purpose of the video go ahead and screw everything back on there now this one you have to get the wire behind the adapter because the other adapter for the 6x9 in the front had a little hole this one does not but either way it still worked out man it's hot out here it's close to like 98 degrees right now and i'm sweating like a pig but all right door is done so we got both driver and passenger side driver and driver rear door done speakers in there let's turn the car on and see what it sounds like it sounds good Sounds good. Oh, everything sounds good. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at how we're going to remove that cover. Again, the sub is gone already, but we're going to remove that cover. I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now. All right, we're gonna have to remove this entire trim piece right out of the way to get to this subwoofer. We're gonna start by removing five Phillips screws to get this trim piece out of the way. So get every carpet or anything you have in the trunk out of the way. Go ahead and remove all the screws from here. Be careful you don't run them off and don't lose them. Make sure you place them somewhere where you gotta remember which screw goes where. And that's out of the way. Go ahead and take your trim tool or a screwdriver and pry that out of the way. You'll expose one more Phillips head screw right in here. Then you're gonna remove this little trim piece that holds this hook on there. And then you expose a 10 millimeter screw to get that trim piece out of the way. Move all those seats forward, go ahead and flatten everything out very much. And then you'll have to remove the two 10 millimeters that are in here to remove this trim panel or hook panel, whatever you wanna call this out of the way. Then after you're removing that, you're gonna remove, expose two more 10 millimeters. Actually, these are Phillips. 
get those out of the way as well. Take each one of them out. Make sure you don't cross try them or anything when pulling them out. And then that'll remove the double deck trim that is on there. I'm not sure if all four runners have this, but we'll get that out of the way. Then you're gonna take this little pry tool or a pick, and you're gonna have to kind of pry on this little thing here. This is basically holding the carpet down at this point. Go ahead and pry on it, pull that out of the way, and then move the carpet, just kind of set it halfway through the, you don't, you don't have to remove it completely out of the car. By doing this, you expose two, two more Phillips screws. Take those out of the way there. And you'll have two more to remove. One is gonna be in the small compartment and the other one's gonna be in that little divot in there. Go ahead and take those out. Once we do that, we're gonna go ahead and remove the trim piece right here by the door. And then you're gonna remove the bolt that's in here holding the seatbelt. Go ahead and take that trim piece out of the way. And this is a 14 millimeter. Now it took a while for my impact to get it out, but it did get it out. You may need a breaker bar as well. And then once that one's out, go ahead and just pry forward with by your hands. You don't even need a pry tool actually. On both sides here, and it may take a little bit kind of wiggling back and forth. I had to put the seat up just to kind of get the bottom piece out of the way. Once that's all done, there is one more connector for the 12 volt outlet in the back here. Go ahead and unplug that, and you're good to go. All right, so we're at this point where, like I said, I have already taken the speaker off of this thing. So the only thing left is the backing of the speaker. And I only left pretty much two screws when I took all that off. Now these are T20 Torx screws, so you're gonna need the T20 just like you're gonna need the T20 for that dash uh, speaker as well. Same thing with these right here. These are dash speakers. These actually, I'm gonna show you guys real quick how to take this cover off. It literally just takes a trim tool to get that off. So literally just insert a trim tool right on the edge here and that pops right out. And again, those are T20s as well. Mine again, it's gone from there. Um, again, it, the, this, this speaker, the dash speaker, the two tweeters on the doors are the same exact speaker, the two and three quarter speaker. So if you give, you would need pretty much two, four, five speakers to get them. They only come in pairs, of course, unless you can find somebody selling some used ones. But again, T20s, get this out. There's your cable, same thing. It's got the actual resistor in there. Here's the what's left of it. If you are gonna do these, unplug it from in there. Pull this whole thing out, and just like we did on the doors, you're gonna do those. Again, I'm not replacing the speaker. I'm actually gonna be disconnecting the other side as well. But anyways, so once you get to this point here, you're able to get the speaker out. It has its own screws, by the way, the speaker. You'll have left with some T20s here. You usually got one, two, three, four, five, six screws. Comes out, and then everything pulls out. And then, of course, right behind there is gonna be the connectors that you're gonna unplug from this. Go ahead and remove the old factory sub. In my case, I'm removing what's left of the factory sub. Unplug the connectors. You will need to cut those connectors right off of there. You're just gonna need the wiring. Go ahead and mock up where you're gonna be installing the sub for now. In this case here, I kind of used a little pick. I was gonna just mark them, but I decided to just pre-drill holes where the new screws are gonna go into. Now, there are some holes that won't coincide because you'll have the factory connect or the factory screws on there so you can drill holes in that area but mine held up with pretty much four in there there's four holes to put the new screws in now when you're installing these basically again cut the connectors off the red goes in the positive the yellow goes in the negative on this side make sure everything's tight and hooked up properly on the opposite side you're going to use the green is going to be your negative and your purple or brown is going to be the positive once all your connection is made, go ahead and test out the subwoofer before reinstallation. I did on mine, but I just didn't show you guys the video, but I did do that before I go ahead and install everything back together.
All right, so now everything is all back together and I apologize for not actually not showing you guys that I did test that subwoofer, of course, before I put everything back together. In the video, you guys saw me just kind of put it on and then slap everything back together, but I did test it. And I'm gonna show, listen to you guys, have you listen. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how it sounds back here with that subwoofer on, and then we'll listen to the entire car with everything enclosed and how it sounds inside. Now, I did not grab audio from before to go to the before and after, unfortunately, but you guys will get the picture. All right, so now that we heard pretty much how the subwoofer sounds, let's go ahead and listen to every single speaker in the car and how it sounds inside the car. All right, everyone, so there you have it. Car sounds amazing, and that's only with seven speakers out of the ten speakers that it should have. Uh, I eliminated the two, tweet the two tweeters on the back pillars here and the one in the dash, but it still sounds awesome. Love the way this, uh, the actual subwoofer sounds on this thing now. And there's no rattle. There's no rattling or buzzing or anything, and it sounds amazing. So the total cost for this was less than $170. It actually cost, it came out to $165. And that's with the subwoofer, all the speakers, the two tweeters, and of course, all the mounting brackets for the speakers as well as the wiring connectors. Now, one of the speakers I didn't get from Amazon, but there is a link for it, so I will put it down below. I ended up actually getting that from my buddy, Automotive Redesigns. I'll put his link in the description below. You guys can communicate with him. He is an audio installer. He's been doing it for years. He does an amazing job. He's actually gonna be doing some work on the Caddy for his sound system on this thing. Again, cars are different. 2003 to a 2015 with a Q sound system and all that stuff. I won't be touching this car myself. That's something that he needs to do on that one. But these, usually the older cars, 18 year old cars and stuff like that, are easy, especially if you have a car with only four speakers on it. Anyways, I don't wanna go off topic here. So there you have it. Budget install on a budget car. I hope this video helps somebody else out there. Again, I will put the links to the, everything I use and how I cross-reference everything to get everything out of Amazon for cheaper than Crutchfield. I'll put the link for Crutchfield down below. Again, you can put your vehicle make model year in there and it will give you what speakers and, th and everything you need for it and actually give you even instructions on how to do it. And then of course you could cross-reference that with Amazon and get all the parts from Amazon. And that's exactly what I did. Again, less than 170 bucks and I got a better sound system than I did before. Not an upgrade, but just a replacement and making it sound better than it did. So that's the end of the video. Again, I hope to help somebody else out. If it did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit that like button as well, and I'll see you guys on my next video. Take care.